What's up, guys? It's Fancy Joe here bringing you some 2021 fantasy content. We've got our early first rankings of our top 12 running backs for 2021 in this video. Um, if you're new to the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Um, and without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so my RB1 for 2021 is Christian McCaffrey. Um, the reasons that McCaffrey is my RB1 are pretty simple. He dominated when healthy. He dominated in 2019, was the number one uh, scoring running back. And in the three games that he played in 2020, he averaged 27.3 points per game. Um, also in those three games that he played with the new coaching staff, he averaged over 25 touches in his three games. Now three games is a small sample size, but when you combine that small sample size with the dominance that he had in 2019, I think that he's the clear-cut number one overall pick in my book. If he plays 16 games, which he's been healthy his whole career up until this year, um, if he plays 16, I expect him to catch right around 100 passes or somewhere in that range. And in half-point PPR, which these rankings are, that just gives you a huge advantage um, over pretty much everybody in your league. I mean, he just plays so many snaps. And, yeah, maybe this year because they saw the success that they had um, – with their backup, who I'm drawing a blank on his name at this moment. But um, when they see the success, I think I still think that he might get the ball a little bit, but I still think Christian McCaffrey is going to dominate his snaps. He's making, I think, almost $16 a year annually. Um, so he's going to get the ball, and he's going to be a beast with it. Um, Mike Davis was the backup. That's who I couldn't remember. Mike Davis. Sorry. I had to take a moment to remember that name, um, but yeah, with, let's move. Christian McCaffrey locked and loaded, um, top RB. Let's move on to RB number two. The number two spot we've got Dalvin Cook. Uh, Dalvin Cook dominated last fantasy season. He had a great year. He had three hundred and twelve carries in just fourteen games. Um, the workload that he gets in that Kubiak offense. I know we saw today that Kubiak is stepping down. His son is taking over, but I still expect that that. Um, Minnesota coaching staff that they're going to continue to run the ball with Dalvin Cook. They paid him again this offseason. Um, they're committed to him. I, th I see him being the guy that is going to keep getting, keep getting the ball. He's electric with his hands, can always burst a long one. When you're getting that many carries, you get plenty of opportunities. Um, I think his receptions also could come up from last year. I think two, 2019 he caught over 50 passes. Last year he's in the 40s. Not a big drop-off, but if he could play a healthy 16 ever, I think he'll be in that 50 to 60 pass range, honestly. All right, so let's move on to our RB3. And, the re yeah, Derrick Henry. Two reasons, very simple reasons why Derrick Henry is number three on our rankings. Um, th in 2019, he had 303 carries, and in 2020, last year, he had 378 carries, which is just ridiculous. Um, all we all know that he had over 2,000 rushing yards last year, which was phenomenal by him. He's a fantastic running back. The only knock and the reason that Derrick Henry is third on my list is because of the pass catching. Catches usually less than 20 passes every year in the half point PPR. That just brings you down. And I mean, yeah, he had a he did rush for 2,000 last year, but I mean, is he going to rush for 2,000 this year? I feel like you're buying into the hype that he's going to repeat if you're drafting him as the number one or number two overall running back. Although I get it because he did just rush for 2,000 yards. Um, I think if you're in a standard league, he gets a definite bump. And if you're in a PPR, I think he takes a little bit of a decline, although he's still obviously valuable. But the pass catching is the reason I took both Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook over him. I just think they'll be a little bit more consistent week to week because of that. He also, this year, Derrick Henry was smashing rushing touchdowns. He's done that the last two years. Um, has just been getting into the end zone at a very efficient rate. Okay, our number four running back, Saquon Barkley. This one is a little tough to give you a whole lot of stats on because really he has been he's pretty banged up. He was banged up a lot in 2019, missed several games, and then he was kind of had some games where he came back and he was wasn't completely healthy and didn't play at that Saquon Barkley level that we've seen from his rookie year. And then last year, towards ACL early in the year, missed basically the entire season. Um, but still remains, he is a super, super talented running back. 
And if he's in fantasy football, it's all about talent and opportunity. He has the talent and he has the opportunity. When you're dra- I mean, it was years, it's two years ago now, but when you're drafted the number two overall running back in your class, I mean, you're passing on quarterbacks, pass rushers, tackles, all that to get a running back. So he's going to get the ball. He stays healthy. He's had it for easily 250 carries plus and 50 plus receptions. You can just book him for both of those if you play 16. And I think when you have a talent level as good as he is, even though their offensive lines are near the bottom of the league, I think they'll improve a little bit this year. Um, got some rookies getting Will Hernandez back. Had some rookies that played poorly. Andrew Thomas at left tackle spot didn't play great. But, I mean, he can't play much worse than he did this year, to be honest with you. And I just think that um, hopefully Joe Judge will get things going ahead, ahead in the right direction. I just think if, if Saquon Barkley does play 16 games, he is going to be a boon for your fantasy team if you have him. I mean, he does things by himself all the time. And I think that situation, although it doesn't look great, I don't think it will be bad enough to hold him back from being a top five running back in 2021. At number five, we have Alvin Kamara. Another thing I should say, guys, these running these rankings are obviously going to move around as the year goes. Um, Alvin Kamara was one of the biggest guys. I think it was so hard to rank this year just because – we don't know what their offense is going to look like exactly next year with Drew Brees retiring, Jameis taking over most likely. Maybe they draft another quarterback, you know, maybe Jameis doesn't want to come back, who knows. Um, but at this point, it's looking like Jameis is going to be the guy. And for that reason, I've got Alvin Kamara at five. And maybe he'll move up ahead of Saquon. These are two guys that are very hard for me to rank. But um, I do think that Kamara's passing numbers could come down a little bit being in this offense with uh, out Drew Brees. I think Drew Brees has kind of leaned on him these last several years, especially in the later parts of the season where his arm strength hasn't necessarily been there, where he's thinking, uh, let's get the ball out quick, let's get to Kamara, he can do something with it. Um, but still, regardless, we've seen how good Alvin Kamara has been in his NFL career. I don't think that even if even Drew Brees retiring, I don't think is going to, Stop him from being a fantasy beast. He had 170. He's had 170 plus carries and 80 plus receptions in three straight seasons, and he's a goal line beast. We had, I think, he had 16 rushing touchdowns in 2020. Didn't have as many in 2019, but the year before that, he had a ton. I think 2019 was more of an aberration. Um, I think that he's going to get back to scoring a lot of uh, touchdowns, catching a lot of passes, and it might not be 80, but I think he's booked for at least 60. I think he shows up and he gets catches 60 passes as long as he does, he stays healthy. And if he's getting the running if he's getting the um the carries on the ground like I think he will, I think he could be a great running back. And that's another interesting point with him though is Latavius Murray, I believe, is a free agent. So whatever they do at the running back position, if they draft a rookie, that'll give Alvin Kamara probably a, a bump thinking that they're not going to trust the rookie right away, that he's going to get a little bit more carries. Maybe he gets 205 carries or something this year. You know, he's another guy, just secured a long-term deal. Um, he's going to get the ball. He's got that, all the talent in the world. We know he's going to be a beast. At number six, we have Jonathan Taylor. He had 15-plus touches in his last seven games for the Colts this year, and he finishes RB6 last year in 2020. The reason I have Jonathan Taylor so high on this list at number six is um, – as we said, talent opportunity. He's got the talent, was a beast producer at Wisconsin. And that offensive line that he has in Indianapolis is just going to be clear in lanes for him. I mean, they've got Quentin Nelson who, at the left guard. We know who's been highly publicized, but they also have a bunch of other um, highly talented offensive linemen. Ryan Kelly at center. Their right tackle, Braden Smith, is good. Even if Costanzo retires, I think they can replace him as long as they replace him with a solid player. Um the like, uh, replacement level player right, it will be fine for them. The offensive line, I think, will still um, continue to play well and be able to run the ball at a high level. And I just think that I think Jonathan Taylor is going into a situation similar to like Zeke's situation when he came, first came into the league, where just playing behind a dominant offensive line when you've got that top end speed and you're getting the ball close to 300 plus times a year, uh, things are going to happen. You know, I think the only knock on Jonathan Taylor coming into this year though is that Philip Rivers. It's not going to be his quarterback, and Phil Rivers love to throw the running back. And they're still going to have Naeem Hines, so probably going on passing downs, Naeem Hines can be stealing some of that third down work from Jonathan Taylor. But if he gets close to that 300 carry mark, which I expect him to be kind of around that range, catching 30 passes next year, I still think he's going to be a fantasy beast behind that offensive line. At number seven, speaking of, uh, we have Ezekiel Elliott. Now, Zeke was a big disappointment for fantasy owners who drafted him in 2020. Um, but 
he averaged 19.9 points per game at half point when with Dak was in the lineup. Um, his O line was also very banged up last year. Um, that was like one of the less publicized uh, events about the Cowboys. I feel like everything was like, oh, they just lost Dak. But really, I mean, Tyron Smith, they lost. Their, I mean, they lost their right tackle, Leo Collins, before the year even started. Um, he never pursued up, played a game. He's a good. He's a good player. Um, their left tackle, Tyron Smith, also same thing. He missed. He played a, for the first few games, but then was out out for the rest of the season. Their right. Their all pro right guard. Uh, Zach Martin got hurt uh, at a certain point, and then they're both their backup tackles after after uh, got hurt. So it's like they were really just banged up all across the offensive line. Made it really hard for Zeke to run. Made it hard, easy for other teams to play the run when they knew they were playing Andy Dalton. Um, I don't believe in the Cowboys coaching staff a great deal, but I do believe that when you give a running back as much money as Ezekiel Elliott did. You're bringing back Dak back. You have all these weapons on offense. The offensive line gets healthy. I think he's just going to slide again into a position. I think the talent has dropped off a little bit in these recent years, but I think that the situation is still perfect for Zeke, where it's just like if, if all those pieces are back, I think he's going to be a top five running back again this year just by volume and touchdowns alone. The brings us number eight. Aaron Jones, um, he's a guy who's difficult to rank exactly because we don't know, you know what team he'll be on. Um, he could be on a certain team, not be a top 12 running back. He'd be a team, maybe he'll be even a little higher. But I think wherever he goes, he's going to get paid. He's had two great years the last two years. I think he's rushed for over 1,000 both the last two years, if I'm not mistaken. He's electric out of the backfield. Um, honestly, playing style-wise, he reminds me a little bit of Alvin Kamara, just what he's been able to do efficiency-wise with his rushes as far as yards per touch and catching the ball. He's just been, once he has a ball in his hands, he is electric. Um, and he was in a top five running back too each of the last two seasons. So it's just like, we've seen, yeah, he's in the Green Bay offense for both those years. But if someone's going to come out and pay him seven, eight million dollars per season, um, he's going to get the rock. And like I said, what we've seen him do with his efficiency numbers over this time, I think he's going to continue to dominate, especially once he's in a situation where they're giving him the ball 15, 20 times a game every game which is like where I hope he goes to a situation like that. But um, I think someone's going to pay him, and then they're going to give him the ball, and I think he'll produce because he's a great player. At number nine, we have Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb um, had a great year last year. Um, only was able to play in 12 games. They were able to rush for over 1,000 yards on only 12 games, average over 16.6 points per game in half-point fantasy PPR, even with Kareem Hunt being there and being some, getting some goal line work and stuff. He just... He's a great runner. Um, I brought Derrick Henry light because Derrick Henry doesn't catch a lot of passes and neither does Nick Chubb. But what they do in the running game behind their, their offensive lines, I mean, those guys, they, you know, they, they get the slight down tick because they don't catch the passes, but they make up for it in rushing attempts. Um, if I was going to bet on two guys, like if I had to bet on two guys to lead the league in rushing next year, it would probably be Nick Chubb and Derrick Henry because I think both these guys are going to get the ball 300, 250 times and they're just going to, they're going to put up some numbers. Um, yeah, I think Nick Chubb is just one of the best uh, runners in the league, and I think that uh, he'll dominate again, especially if he can stay healthy in um, 2021. If he plays 16, I think he'll be locked and loaded at top 10 running back. Which brings us to our number 10 running back, Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs in 15 games last year, he had over 270 carries, 273 to be exact, and 12 rushing touchdowns. He did not get involved in the passing game to the degree that you would have liked to see. I think that's what's holding him back from just being a fancy stud. He was also banged up last year. He played in some games even where he was playing injured and wasn't fully effective. If he could figure out, he was banged up too his rookie year. Um, that was one of his knocks coming out of college as we hadn't seen him carry an NFL workload, so we didn't know if he'd be able to physically stand up to that. But I think that if he ever does play 16, like we saw he did in 15 last year, he was just so electric, and even with the games where he wasn't really, you know, himself, he was still able to, this 12 rushing touchdowns is a lot, 270 carries, and just like, I do think eventually he's going to start getting some more of this pass-catching work. I don't know if it was a shortened off season, like him being a rookie his first year, I get not catching passes, and then maybe it was a shortened off season this year, they didn't, he didn't get enough time to really get used to it, or maybe they just didn't trust him, I don't know. I think a lot of it, though, had to do with his health, so I think he stays, if he, if he can actually stay healthy, I think he could be one of those guys who could have 270-plus carries, 250-plus carries, be catching 
50, 60 passes, and he is an electric pass catcher. I think once they really get him going in that facet of his game, he could really start putting up. You know, I think he's a guy who could – I haven't ranked a 10, but let's say he gets a – if he stays healthy, he's a guy – and gets a pass game involvement that I think he will, he's a guy who could easily be a top five running back potential with those double digit rushing touchdowns that he's been able to score. Which brings us to our next running back, number eleven, I've got Austin Eckler. Eckler dominated in twenty nineteen when he was able to stay healthy. He caught over eighty passes that year, I think. Um, was just, I mean, a fancy beast. And then last year, and then that was with Melvin Gordon was there. Melvin Gordon obviously left one for Denver. And he started getting the ball even more in the running game, especially. If he, he only played uh, nine healthy games last year, I think he played in a total of 10. Um, he got hurt really early in one of them, but it's just like if you would average his stats out for the games that he played, he was on pace for 185 carries, which doesn't sound like a lot. We've talked about some of these other guys, well over 200. But when you talk, when you talk about a guy who's half point PPR with his pass game involvement, he's similar to a. I think he's, like I said earlier, um, Derek. Nick Chubb is Derrick Henry light. I think he's Christian McCaffrey light. He's not going to get the ball nearly as many times, but he's dangerous when he's got it. He always makes the first guy miss, and he's going to. And Justin Herbert has shown that he's one of those guys who likes to throw to his best players. He threw, um, and he wasn't able to play a whole lot with Herbert, but um, now that he will in the future, I think that's going to be a great benefit to their offense, especially if they could get some offensive line help there. Um, and so yeah, here look at this stat: nine healthy games last year, he had 15 plus touches in seven of them. When he's getting 15 touches, he's going to be an RB1 most of those weeks, I think, because he, the pass catching work um, that he gets. So let's move on to our last running back of this video. At 12, we have Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He had 181 carries in 13 games as a rookie, and I expect his pass catching to increase with a full offseason. So he was a disappointment. A lot of people were drafting him in the first round. Um, and yeah, he wasn't as good as people thought he was going to be, but I just think patience is a key virtue here with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He's a first round pick. He's going to continue to get the ball. Um, I don't think there's any worries about that. I mean, even 181 carries in 13 games as a rookie, it's not great. Like I think his carries could even go up from there, but it's still a pretty substantial workload. I think when you are that first round pick, you're going to get your chance to to cement the job for yourself. And like I said, the shortened off season, I think really have factored into him learning the pass routes and learning all that stuff and be able to be used, fully implemented in that. I think once he gets in that, he's an easily easily a 60 reception guy in, in the Chiefs offense. Plus you add into his, his next year, he plays at 16 games. He's going to get well over 200 carries. Um, I think he'll get better on the goal line. That was one of the areas that he struggled with, but I don't think he can be near as bad as he was this year on the goal line. And so it's just like if he can punch in, if he can have eight total touchdowns next year, I think that I think that's a pretty reasonable number. I think he could even have more, um, a lot more potentially in this Chiefs offense. But I think you get eight when you can in the amount of touches that he's getting, especially in the passing game. Um, I think he'll be a fantasy beast going forward. Um, if you got to this point in the video and you liked it, um, please leave, subscribe. Uh, like and comment it does a lot for the video it does a lot to help with the channel um, thank you all for watching this has been fancy joe have a good one